Jill of the Jungle video game review. So, yes, gonna try to do some video game reviews again. My body is finally, you know, good enough to, to play at least some video games. Still not great for sitting still for a really long time, so I'm gonna try to do this fast. And this is going to be off the cuff. I, I did not take notes again because of physical pain and yes um, the yeah to start with this took me about an hour 23 and a half minutes to complete which is basically because I wanted to to try to lose as little health as possible and get every single thing to pick up if you don't care about that kind of stuff oh uh, probably 50 minutes, maybe even 40, to, to fully complete. Right, um, this video will only cover the first of the three parts. I will do follow-up videos covering the the other two parts of the, the trilogy. So, plot-wise, this does not have a lot. Like, it, where it ends, it's, you know, is, is pretty cool plot-wise. But over the course of it, I, I kind of kept waiting for plot to start. Um, but, you know, this was a time when this when this game first came out, not every video game had a lot of plot. I should also say, I'm going to try to be fairly neutral on this, because I, I'm not really a big fan of gatekeeping. I think different people love different things about video games, so I'm really, I'm trying not to be, like, mean. I'm just going to be descriptive, is, is the goal here. And this is probably a pretty good time to say this is a subgenre I absolutely love. This is a platform action adventure, and yeah, that's that was the the very first type of video game I was introduced to with the original Prince of Persia and the um, Commander Keen Episode Four and Keen Dreams. Those were the absolute first games that I played, and yeah, so. Let's see, and yeah, uh, it's not a show that has a lot as far as character goes. Like, essentially, you know, Jill, it's a it's gender swap Tarzan, essentially, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but they don't really go any further than that. There, there are not a lot of, like, references to the fact that she is a woman, which is, again, something that was a bit mixed at this point in, in time in, in video games. There were some games that really didn't make a big deal out of there were some that did and yeah so the game does not have an awful lot of like unusual features a lot of the time it is basically just you walk you know side to side on the on the screen you jump you you climb these like vines and you can pick up a couple of weapons and the weapons are all ranged the, 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 you know, it's, the, the game in, in a lot of ways feels like basically, again, not, not to be mean, it's not quite bigger and better than the Command Keen games, especially the, you know, maybe not the, the first three of them, but the, the latter ones, you know, the, yeah, although, you know, right now this is, this entire trilogy is free on GG.com. You do have to pay for Commander Keen, and I'm not sure I know of a, a great like version of Commander Keen that's available for for sale right now. I'm I'm fortunate enough that I still have the copy that I I got you know as as a kid. But if you don't, yeah, some of the the versions apparently not playing great. So there's that you know th this will scratch that itch for sure. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, there's this thing where you can turn into a frog that jumps really f well. You can turn into a fish that can, you know, fire projectiles and swim. You know, that's essentially it. Uh, and, and I guess fly, technically. And then there's the, which, you know, Jill herself cannot take water. Uh, you know, she's one of those video game characters that just, you touch water, you die. Um, 
Uh, yes, that brings us to... Yes, and the third thing you can turn into is this... I think it's called the Phoenix, and yeah, it is basically a, a firebird. Spits fire, and it flies, and it also does not handle water well. The There's a, a little bit of a, a frustrating thing with the, the bird, that you, in, in order to fly upwards, you have to repeatedly press the the jump key and this is logical enough however back then you know yeah it it kinda it gets I forget what the word is but if you press it enough times in a short space of time it's gonna stop responding the, the jump key is not the game and that is of course an issue when there are times where the game kind of requires you to do that because anytime you're not if, if you're playing as the bird and you're not pressing jump, you are slowly, you know, de descending. So that's slightly annoying. And I, I wish that they had just put it on the up key because it's right now it's on the shift key, which does it helps a little that you can like, you know, there's two shift keys, so you can you can go back and forth between clicking them. But there were multiple times where I had to actually just slow down and, and wait for the game to, to be ready for me to, to quickly tap the, the key again. And the... I think that about covers the... Right, so, yeah, um, the... When you're playing as Jill, the, the two weapons are a knife and a spinning blade, and both of them you throw, and then, you know, they, they move, and then they return to you. You can't... I think there's at least one time where you have like two knives, so you can throw both at the same time. Other than that, you have to throw it and then wait for it to return. It's slightly annoying that the knife, sometimes enemies are slightly lower than where you throw the knife, so you have to get a little creative, like jump and let the, the thing catch up to you from, you know, go into the air. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it didn't need to be the, the kind of, yeah, and, and this is the kind of thing you don't get with, for example, Commander Keen, Bio Menace, you know, stuff like that, stuff from the same time. Uh, there is a similar thing in Dark Ages, but I think Dark Ages does a better job of making it, it there it feels like an intentional sort of, you know, this is supposed to, you know, this is supposed to add a challenge, where here it just, it doesn't completely feel like it was necessarily completely purposeful. Uh, let's see, yeah, the camera's very basic, follows you, you know, you, you move, the camera follows you, and you can also, uh, sneak peek up and down with the up and down keys, and, yeah, there's not a huge, uh, amount of variety to the, the enemies, again, compared to stuff from the same time, like Commander Keen. And, uh, yeah, AI is very basic. There are a few enemies that will actually try to follow you and attack. A lot of the enemies, they just, they have a set movement pattern. Uh, let's see. And, yeah, uh, the game, a, a lot of the game is fetch quests. You are picking up gems or keys, and both of them will open certain doors. Uh, it is largely linear, though there is a little bit of freedom of movement, especially outside of the, the levels. There's like an overarching map that allows you to access the, the different levels. So it doesn't have cutscenes, but it does do this thing where every so often it'll pop in with like a newspaper article, which, you know, it's slightly cringy today, but back then, you know, sometimes they would, they're basically hyping up themselves, which has not aged very well because it's all about oh you know com it's, you can you you know commander keen you know the the first one video game character that quits is commander keen and at the time i thought oh cuz they just d dumped commander keen to start making doom games but no they just kept going and you know one of them's like pac-man and it's like and he was pac-man even did they think that pac-man was that big i, I don't know i guess in early 90s, he was still sort of a big deal at the time. But yeah, you know, one of them is like Super Mario, which is just like, wow, they really thought that they were going to... 
I don't know if it's, it might have been, like, they, maybe they were trying to manifest or something, but, yeah, Mario, he's doing okay. Jill, like, a lot of people don't even know if this game exists. I didn't know this game existed until it was free on GOG.com, you know, but, yeah, you know, and, and they talk about, you know, oh, Duke Nukem quits, which, you know, I mean, he kind of did for a while, but that was after this game came out, not before it, um, and let's see. Yeah, the the graphics are fairly simple. You know, there's there's more variety and more interesting designs in the the Commander King games. Not the first three, perhaps, but the the certainly the later ones. And uh, it's probably roughly the same level as Bio Menace. And the audio is is fine. It, there are a couple of uh, sounds that they that play too many like there's um, yeah there's there's certain movements that produce the same sound every time you do it which gets annoying but again that's an issue from the you know 90s video games in, in general as far as challenging goes um so that's it's very relative it's definitely a, a big thing is that you can save scum. There's nothing preventing you from save scumming. You have, I want to say, seven or eight save slots. You can save any time. There are infinite saves, much like the the Commander King game, Commander King games after those first three. And you know, obviously that does mean that there are certain areas that are not going to be as tough. You know, for comparison, Bio Menace does not allow saving during levels, only at the very, uh, right before a level starts, you can save, you know. So that one, I spent more time, you know, replaying stuff. I would not say that it ever gets quite as challenging as even Commander Keen 4. You know, that one has more complex challenges than this one, where basically, like, you're just, you're avoiding touching certain things that insta-kill you, you're avoiding enemies, you're you're lining up shots for enemies, you know, the, the puzzles are really not particularly difficult. Um, there were a couple of times where I thought, oh, this is when it gets, you know, I can imagine maybe parts two and three start to get more difficult, because certainly, you know, Dark Ages, that was very much the, the case, that got tougher and tougher, and you know, when I sit down to play that today, it's like, wow, how did I ever find this difficult? Which, you know, when I was a kid, I did. That was also, yeah, that was also one of the very first games that I played. Um, as far as whether or not it's a fun game to play, it is very of its time. And I really, I, I hate when people say, oh, it's dated. It's of its time. It's perfectly fine for what it is, and it does offer a couple of things. Like I don't, it's been a while since I, well, it's been a while since I played a video game. Period. But it's been a while since there was a game where I could turn into a bird, you know, and and yeah, you know, swim under underwater in in such a yeah, like a fish, you know, and and yeah, for for stuff like that, you know, and and you know, the fact that. Yeah, currently free on GOG.com doesn't exactly hurt as far as, you know, I I would say it's it's primarily, like, if you, like me, really love this sort of thing, yes, it can be pretty fun, and you'll, you know, once again, it's free, it's just an event, investment of time, you'll know pretty quickly if it's for you or not, because what you see is what you get, like, the the... You'll you'll know within minutes if it's your kind of thing or or not. And there's not a lot of replayability because basically it is just you know you're collecting stuff, and that increases your points and the the apples you can collect in you know re replenish your health. And I think they also extend your health bar somewhat. Um, yeah, yeah, you know that's like you're either gonna be just kind of rushing through the game and not really care about that, or you're going to try to be a completist about it, you know, like I was, and once you, like, 
I might play this again, but it wouldn't be because I thought that there was something I could accomplish that I didn't the first time, you know. It's not one of those games where if you return to it, there's there's stuff that, you know. Um, let's see. And... Yeah, I didn't really run into any bugs or glitches other than the, you know, yeah, what I've what I've mentioned. And there was one place which I hate when this happens because this is one of those games where it feels like, oh, I mean, I guess I can just if I'm careful, I can complete the entire game without losing any health. I almost got there, but there was this one place. No matter what I tried, it seemed like I I couldn't not touch the thing that hurt me, which hurt me. But, yeah, um, beyond that, you know, it's not, like, super buggy and, and glitchy, at least in my experience. And, let's see, so yeah, the, the setting, you know, you're, you're running around this, this jungle, obviously, and there is a, a decent, you know, so there's, there's, like, these old, ancient, you know, structures in the jungle, and some of the time you are just running around, you know, there's, there's trees, there's vines, you know, there's, there's water, um, there are, yeah, there's a, there's a decent enough variety to level design, to, to, yeah, settings, uh, as far as, you know, they, they somewhat limit themselves with this concept of, you know, yeah, like, I'm not entirely sure when it's supposed to be set, but it feels like it could, you know, over the course of this one, certainly, feels like it could have been set, like, a hundred years ago or something, where, for example, you know, a Biomenace, I want to say, is, like, present day, so is Commander Keen, and they have, like, aliens and such, so, you know, there's a ton of possibility for creativity there. The level design itself is perfectly adequate, you know, there's enough variety, like, I will say, at the very start of playing the game, I was like, oh, is this all it's gonna be? It's not, you know, you... You get a little bit further into it, the the levels get more complex, and, uh, you know, still wouldn't say it's it's not quite as, like, you know, there's there's levels in Commander Keen 4, I know, I mentioned that game way too much, I love that game, what can I say? Um, there's, there's levels in that, where you pretty much have to, like, sit down and think, okay, where am I going how do I get there? What do I do when I get there? And that just never really happens with with this one. You can pretty much just you know you you see a you see a switch. You're probably meant to flip it. There's like one or two places where you have to get a little creative with that sort of thing. But a lot of the time it is just you know go from point A to point B, do something there, move on to point C. That's pretty much it. And right and and yeah something. Uh, perhaps I, I w my biggest pet peeve with the platformer genre is and this is often because of you know they, they like to do this very striking visual design a lot of the time you can't tell until you touch something if the thing you're looking at with its striking design helps you or hurts you and that's something where this game with you know the ability to save scum, yeah, it's like, there. the first time I touched water, I, you know, because cause it looks like it's, it's, it looks like she should basically be able to, to stay in it. it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't like reach, it would maybe reach her, her knees or something, you know, but nope, you touch it and you immediately die, you know, which, yeah, um, but it, yeah, there's stuff like that, there's a couple of things that look like they're gonna hurt you, but you have to touch them, and vice versa, and yeah, you know, you'll want to save often, and sometimes the first time you see a thing, just save, touch it, then you'll know, you know, so that's not as big, that was a bigger frustration for me in games where you could only save between level, yeah, yeah, not during levels, you know, yeah, stuff like Bio Menace, the, you know, Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3, and that, despite the fact that I do love Crash Bandicoot 3. But yeah, I think that covers everything. So, yeah, like, for sure, like, I'm glad that I played it. You know, this is, like, hypothetically, if this was just a miserable experience, it would have been like, well, I should have just 
played one of the Commander Keen games again, you know. But no, it was it was an enjoyable experience. Seven out of ten, you know, for its time, for the limitations of it, you know, this was also apparently like I, I read the the Wikipedia for it, and this was hold on, I'll have it momentarily. So this was let's see, um. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, maybe I was thinking of something else. Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, but but yeah. Um, right. One one thing I I will say. Um, this is one of those games like they could have easily just had you constantly as frog, fish, or bird, but they actually use it sparingly, so it ends up feeling special, which I really appreciate, you know, so they they did a, a good job on that, and let's see, yeah, as far as, you know, if you're just, like, if if you you know the the as far as collectible stuff goes, uh, I saw someone point out. I think it was one of the GG.com reviews. You know, most of the time it's just the apples. So yeah, for sure. You know, if you that's I I understand why that annoys uh, some people. I didn't care too much, but yeah, it definitely again. You know, if you're playing one of the Commander Keen games. There's way more variety. Like, there's a lot of the stuff you can find is just like, oh, that gives you a certain amount of points. But, like, there's a ton of different ones, you know. But, yeah, that is it for this one. Um, yes, I am not sure when exactly I'm going to do the next one. I, I'm still not... I can't play a video game for very long before I have to rest my, my wrists, but, uh, yeah, it is, you know, I will start playing the the second part of this trilogy t today or tomorrow, and as soon as I've completed it, I'll record a video talking about the, the second part. But, yeah, until then, hope you enjoyed this, and, yeah, bye.